We're here with EnviroTube to talk about powerful owls and we're joined by my friend Chris Charles who's been photographing powerful owls in this reserve for over 10 years now. So that's a classical daytime roost tree. You know, it's got cover over the top, other birds so they don't uh, able to swoop in so easily. It's mid-July now, what, what would you sort of be expecting around this time of year? Well this is a, a good time to start looking for them because they will have uh, young owlets in the nest by now. They would have laid beginning of June, eggs would have hatched beginning of July. Well the female is in the nest and she's keeping them warm and the male is busy feeding the three of them. So he's flat out, he's not worried by us, he's too busy. He'll be sleeping today somewhere within sight of the nest. And as soon as it's dark, he'll be calling and off to hunt. A few weeks time, you'll hear the young calling from the nest. So Powerfowls usually just have the one outlet, but we've seen a few seasons with two. Yeah, this, this nest has got a good record. It's uh, usually two survive here. It's a big hollow, it's got a big opening. So we, we've talked about the need for hollows and the Powerfowls having a need for really big hollows. It's sometimes standing on the ground, it's not easily, it's not easy to gauge a scale. Do you have any idea how big that hollow might be? Yeah, we had a look in that hollow. It's big enough for me to get inside it and stand up. It's wider than my shoulders. And uh, the actual hollow is about three metres high because it goes like chimneys above. And... Inside the hollow is yeah. about three metres high. Yeah. The cockies use the same hollow as the powerful owl. They uh, queue up waiting for the powerful owl to finish with it and sometimes they get impatient and they'll go in there while the powerful owl's in there. But the hollow's so big that they can, uh, they don't seem to get into trouble. They do annoy the, especially the male powerful owl. When, when he's calling at dusk, the uh, cockies will drown him out and he gets a bit annoyed with that. Sometimes you'll have a go at them and uh, if you thought it was noisy before that, once he has a go at them, they really scream then. Yeah, so we visited that other hollow and they weren't as lucky. They got attacked by cockatoos, one of the, on the face and the legs. The chick had a feather problem and it wasn't developing its feathers so it couldn't fledge. The cockatoos were getting really uh, upset that they'd booked the nest hollow and the tenants were still in there, you know, and they were getting really agitated about it and they attacked the, uh, the young owlet. It can be a tough world for them. So the hollow that we saw today was in a large Angophra costata. It's a type, of, a type of eucalypt. And there's a lot of eucalypts around this site, but none of them get to that sort of size where they're able to support a hollow of that big. They've really got to have old trees that allow that time to form the hollows. And we're losing them across the landscape. Old trees are often seen as being a risk to people. They can drop limbs, they can fall over. And so we have this conflict in a sense between the perception of risk and the value to conservation. What is it that you love about taking wildlife photography? You don't really know when you're here. You, know, you set up a hide, sit up there in the cold and the mozzies. Oh, there's nothing quite like getting home and putting up on the screen and seeing what you got. 